I'm converting and installing an old computer power supply to power switch machines, Arduinos, and other accessories on my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, today I am getting around to one of those projects that I have been planning on for months, even years. And what that project is, is I'm taking an old discarded computer power supply and converting it to be able to power a 12 volt and a 5 volt bus around my layout to power various accessories, including tortoise switch machines, Arduinos for various kinds of lighting effects and animations, and other types of, of animations for my layout. Now, there have been lots and lots of videos that have been made over the course of the years about taking an AXS computer power supply and converting it to provide bench power for testing various kinds of electronics. And there have been a good handful of videos doing this same kind of a conversion for model railroad purposes. There are two in particular videos that have been a great help to me, because I'm going to be the first to admit I am not an electronics expert, and I have used uh, the advice of, of a number of videos and, and sources online. But two videos that I'm going to recommend because they were of great help to me, and, and I'm going to link them in the top part of the description down below. The first is a video by Tom Kovichak at Tom's Trains and Things, and he shows how to convert an AXS power supply to a power supply that you can use on your layout. The second video by Rob Bennett uh, under the channel of his son's name, Stephen Bennett, and he not only showed how to convert the power supply, but also showed how he installed it on his layout. So we're going to head on over to the workbench and I'm going to show you exactly how I started with a, a discarded power supply from a computer, how we converted it, how we install it on the layout, get the bus run. We're even going to run some switch machines from it. So let's get started now. Visit our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. Their new location with 5,500 square feet of inventory and next day shipping make them your premier model railroad destination. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. This project begins with an old ATX computer power supply. In my case, I had two that came from old discarded Dell computers. The one you see here is not the one that I ended up using on my layout, but the remainder of the video will be of the one that I actually used. It is a 200 watt power supply, which should provide plenty of power for the accessories on my mid-sized layout. The first step is to open up the power supply, remove all of the zip tie binders and the connectors, and sort the wires by color. Each color represents a specific voltage and or function, and these colors are standard across these power supplies. You can find a wiring diagram that delineates the different colors and what they represent with a simple Google search. There are certain supplies that will have an additional color or two, and you can find what they represent in those color charts on Google. But the primary colors that you will find are black for ground, yellow for plus 12 volts, red for plus 5 volts, orange for plus 3.3 volts, blue for negative 12 volts, green for power on, gray for plus 5 volt power good indicator, and purple for plus 5 volt standby. Depending upon your power supply, you may also have sensing wires for any of the 12 volt, 5 volt, or 3.3 volt lines. If you do have sensing wires, these must be saved and connected into the corresponding circuit. The power supply that I used did not have sensing wires. I grouped all of the light colors together in a bundle and bound them with some painter's tape and labeled each bundle so I would remember exactly what it was. You will certainly have more wires than you need, and you can cut some of these wires and insulate them inside of the power supply if you wish, 
but for the sake of carrying plenty of amperage and for the sake of ease, I decided it best just to keep all of the wires intact and connect them into the new power supply system. It's helpful to know the power output of each voltage circuit. This information is printed on the label on the case of your power supply. In my case, this unit supplies 10 amps at plus 12 volts, 22 amps at plus 5 volts, and 2 amps at plus 3.3 volts. The other circuit amperages are listed on the label as well. I used a scrap of 1 half inch plywood to mount my power supply on. I used one bracket that I had on hand and that fit perfectly with one of the mounting holes that's pre-drilled in the case. I then drilled a second hole in the open corner of the bottom of the case and drove a second screw there to stabilize the case. I'll eventually mount several different things on the case of this power supply, but before you mount anything on the case, check carefully to make sure that it will not interfere or touch any of the components that are inside the power supply. I pulled three of the black wires and twisted them together with the green wire, the gray and purple wires, and one of the red wires. The green wire must be connected to ground for the power supply to turn on, so I attached these to a simple on-off switch. The power supply must also be under load to turn on, so the red and black wires I attach to opposite sides of a 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor to serve as that load. The purple standby wire is powered any time that the supply is plugged in, so I used it to power a blue LED standby indicator. The gray power good wire I used to power a green LED power indicator. These LEDs share a single black ground wire. The remaining wires I paired together, soldered together, and fit into crimp style spade connectors. This supply has 18 gauge wires, and I discovered that two wires each fit into blue spade connectors that are made for up to 14 gauge wire. This seemed to work best and fit well into the barrier terminal strips that I was using. For my purposes, at present, I'm only using the plus 12 volt and plus 5 volt lines. I saved the plus 3.3 volt and the negative 12 volt lines in case I ever need them in the future. As I connected the like wires together, I cut them neatly to length and connected them together into a barrier strip with jumpers connecting all of the poles on the barrier strip together. I then mounted the terminal strip to my plywood base and then mounted two other terminal strips for the 12 volt and 5 volt lines as well. I repositioned these a few times before I got them in the configuration that I wanted and had them lined up neatly. I then proceeded to connect the 12 volt wires together exactly as I had the ground wires, then the 5 volt wires likewise. I decided it was a good idea to provide some protection for this system, so I installed a fuse holder and a 6 amp fuse to each of the power circuits. These components are all available on Amazon, and I'll provide a link to several of them under my pick of the week in the description down below this video. From the fuse, I joined the circuit to a two-pole terminal strip to which I will connect the accessory power bus wires on my layout. These are also connected together with jumpers. I marked a clear spot in the top of the case and drilled a one half inch hole to mount my power switch into. This step turned out to be unnecessary as once I installed the power supply on the layout, I moved the switch from here to the fascia on the layout. Wiring the switch is very easy. Simply connect the green wire to one side of the switch and the black wire to the other. In this case, it doesn't matter which way it's connected. I connected the 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor to one of the black wires and the red wire. I chose a resistor with an aluminum case for a heat sink as these resistors can get quite warm and the aluminum helps to dissipate the heat. 
To further dissipate the heat, I mounted the resistor in a safe place on the metal case of the power supply. With the basic wiring done, I plugged the power supply in and turned it on, used my multimeter to check the voltage of the two circuits. The voltage was well within expected output ranges. I soldered a Y onto the black wire that would go to the two indicator lights, and I installed a bracket on which I mounted the lights. Ultimately, the standby light will remain here, but the green power light was mounted on my fascia with the power switch. I used 12 volt LED indicator lights, so no additional resistors were needed when connected to these 5 volt circuits. I mounted the lights in the bracket, then soldered them to the appropriate wires. I protected each joint with heat shrink tubing. I used some quarter inch nylon wire clamps to keep the wires organized and neat. Plugged in the power cord and saw that the standby light came on, then flipped the power switch and saw that the power light came on and was working as well. At this point I was ready to install my power supply on the layout. Under the layout, I installed a pair of 14-inch shelf brackets that I had left over from building the upper-level benchwork for my layout. I bridged these brackets with a couple strips of half-inch plywood ripped three inches wide that I had laying around the garage. I attached the strips with some short cabinet door screws. I placed my new power supply on top of this and attached it to the plywood strips with a couple more screws. Next, it was time to install the actual power bus wires. For the sake of video, I only installed the 12 volt bus, but I will later install the 5 volt bus in exactly the same way. The 12 volt bus will power my switch machines and the 5 volt bus will power Arduino driven accessories and lights. For the accessory bus, I'm using 14 gauge wire, blue for ground, yellow for 12 volt, and white for 5 volt. I connected a spade type crimp connector to the end of the bus and connected it into the corresponding terminal strip. I again controlled all of these wires under the layout with nylon cable clamps. I then ran the bus wire under the layout with the cable clamps until it ran under all of the areas where I needed access to the 12 volt power. Anywhere I needed 12 volt power for an accessory, in this case a switch machine, I installed a two pole barrier strip. I connected the bus wire into the strip, then connected the power wires to the other side which lead to the accessory. For the switch machines, I used double pole double throw switches to reverse the polarity and throw the switch. So the switch is wired into the 12 volt bus. I then ran wires from the switch to the switch machine and I tested it to make sure that the position of my switch machine and the position of my switch corresponded to what I desired. After everything was tested and proved to be working properly, I moved the power switch and the power on indicator light to the fascia. Now I'm ready to power all of my switch machines, lighting effects, animations, and the like anywhere on the layout. This is a relatively inexpensive and easy way to provide accessory power to my layout, and it was a fun project to boot. Well, I gotta tell you, I am very glad to have this power supply finally installed on my layout, and so far it is working fantastically running switch machines. I've been testing it with some Arduinos and that's gonna work really, really well also. And I can't wait to get some of those animations with uh, that are powered by Arduinos installed on the layout uh, in the weeks and months to come. If this is a kind of a project that you're looking at, if you're needing something to power switch machines and accessories separately from your DCC system on your layout, I, I would recommend this process. It's a lot easier than many of us might think uh, and just following uh, some of the guidelines that have been given in other videos and that we can find online, 
uh, you can do this safely and easily. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you may want to see some of the Arduino projects that I'm working on to create animations and lighting effects for my layout. And you can see those videos in a playlist in the corner of your screen right now. My favorite is the one about how I made an Arduino powered campfire that's going to be a scene on my layout. So be sure and check that out. Be sure to check out the description down below where you'll find a link to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, and my Micromark promo code that'll save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad content. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?